going on, guys? <laughs> Friday night stream. My buddy fought on this card. He lost by TKO. Oh, damn, Dana. <laughs> What's going on, Shrek? Oh, my goodness, guys. We have some stuff to talk about tonight. <laughs> Dana, I'm sorry to hear that about your buddy, ma'am. So, we had some interesting news this week about Shakur Stevenson. Um, I think we all knew Shakur Stevenson was going to have to go to 135. I think that was evident. I think we all knew that that was in the cards. That was in the game plan. I don't think we realized how quickly he was going to do that which is interesting it can make things better it can make things worse for him i don't know we'll see how he looks tonight but in general i felt like stevenson was pretty much at that point man <laughs> exactly shrek but it it you know it's one of those things like i, I hate to say it but i'm gonna say it he said you know it's really hard for me to make weight He's he's five seven, maybe five eight. He is not physically built so big, so wide in terms of shoulders or anything like that, that he can't make weight being 25 years old. Because it's really tough to make that kind of argument when your opponent is five ten and a half, basically five eleven, and is 33 years old and makes weight it also doesn't help that you fought jamel herring he's 510 and he's like 36 years old 35 years old like it's tough to make those cases now some guys you naturally look at him you're like he's just too big for this weight class you know devin haney you look at you're like he definitely can go up david benavidez you know you see certain people that you're like spence eventually is going to move up you can see it of course stevenson we knew was going to move up but to make the excuse i can't make weight anymore i you're 25 years old man i get it but you're not huge for the weight class um you know Crazy part, uh, he fights at 135, but tonight he fought at 154. It It's crazy, man. He is, Shrek, he is on the smaller side in terms of who's there currently for for lightweight. And so, look, look, I'm not here to bash Shakur Stevenson. Uh, you know, he didn't make weight. He understands that. He has to pay out of his pocket on that. He lost his belts. It sucks because it... It, it does two things to this fight. John, what's going on? It does two things to this fight, him losing his belts. One, in a way, it could make Shakur Stevenson very spiteful in the ring. And that would be awesome to see him just like go at him, right? And really just pour it on. Take some of that aggression from losing your belts out and just go after it. The other side it could do, depending on how it is, it could deflate him slightly. Confidence maybe isn't the exact same. You just lost your belts. There's elements there that could be good or bad, depending on what happens in his mindset and the people around him that are trying to help him continue in the sport. If, if he has good people around him, they're like, dude, use this for motivation. Go in there and kick his ass. 407, what's going on? Tall kid, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, good people around you will be like, take that, the fact that you just lost both your belts and use that as motivation in the ring tonight. Or, if they have piss poor kind of people around you, Brooke, what's going on? Dave, what's going on? If, if you have bad people around you, you're going to look at it and be like, dude, you didn't make weight. What the hell? Now we got to figure out, you know, the mindset of Shakur Stevenson is going to be interesting. I think he's going to rise to the occasion and get mean. That's what I think. That's what I think. All right. I do find it very rich for Spence <laughs> to call Shakur a weight bully. Yeah, he's he's not a true weight bully. I mean, 
he's not the biggest guy at that weight class. When his when his opponent's bigger than him and older than him, it's you know, come on. Um, Stevenson didn't even try to sweat. Yeah, that's the other part about this. He didn't even try to sweat that hundred. Yeah, that one pound six six ounces or so, basically one and a half pounds. Uh, not good. Like he he could have he could have maybe taken that time and maybe got it away. I don't know. Um, David, you I have to agree with you. You know who? Um, so I hate pronouncing. This guy's name because I can never pronounce it properly. But Robson, the big thing with him, or Robson, is that he's a really accomplished boxer himself. We saw what he did to Oscar Valdez. But on top of that, I don't know if everyone knows this, his background, he's fought guys like Lomachenko back in the day. He's fought guys in the amateurs in various aspects. He's a legit fighter. We've seen that firsthand here. He's been an Olympic gold medalist. I mean, granted, Shakur Stevenson was a silver medalist, but regardless, you know, like we have top level talent tonight from both fighters. Weight's gonna be interesting. Confidence is gonna be interesting. Um, you know, and I know that people are gonna be like, oh, Shakur Stevenson was gonna move up to that weight class anyways. Yeah, sure, I, I, I get it, but I have a feeling that that's not the reason. That's not, you know. So. It does, it does bring up the question of Loma, though. It does bring up that question because that part is huge. If, if he gets the Lomachenko fight, it's looking more possible than it has in a while. Because it was always like, when, when is Stevenson going to go up? Now he's basically been backed into a corner where he's like, yeah, I can't make the weight, so I'm not going to go back on that and continue at this weight class. I'm just going to go move up. Okay. That sounds good to me. By the way, we have another, another big story in terms, talking about weight a little bit. I got to say, man, this shocked me. I didn't, I wasn't looking forward to the fight so much. I wasn't, I'm actually not able to stream the fight. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I was not paying too much attention to Parker versus Joyce a little bit. And, uh, you know, I just happened to be looking at what's going on in terms of their way in. I mean, eh. I, I really think I really think that uh, the people around Joe Joyce are going to be very upset with him, very upset with him, especially based off of his fighting style. Man, you know, we'll say this: the that that Brazilian to uh, too good of a fighter. Yeah, he is he is a good, really good fighter. Um, that you, yeah, you have to weight cut, cut weight for sure. And he's he's going to win uh, over Lomachenko. Loma in the amateurs. Oh, that's right. He had the win over the, um, he had the win over Loma, but they reversed the call afterwards, dude. <laughs> we said the same thing about Parker, but it's different. This is different. Joe Joyce is normally coming in at closer to 250 to 245 maybe maybe like i said maybe 250 um discord should be fine i can't watch tomorrow i have to be at a one-year-old's birthday party <laughs> All the media are saying that Canelo versus Triple G3 was trash. It, it wasn't, well, here's the thing. What's your expectations, right? Um, so anyways, Joe Joyce came in heavy. Parker came in heavier than he did last fight, but not crazy. Joe Joyce coming in at 271 is nuts because he's already slow as molasses. Now we're getting a 25 25 to 30 pound heavier Joe Joyce.
at first, when I first, I, Shrek, no joke, when I read this the first time, I thought, oh, Joseph Parker came in heavy. And then I put, the, put it in my head, no, Joe Joyce did, which normally Joe Joyce is very, very good on the scales. I have not seen him, like, blow up too much and come back down. He doesn't really yo-yo too much. This, this is a huge deal, because Joe Joyce being, like, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, I think he's closer to 6'5", and weighing the same amount as Tyson Fury, and Joe Joyce moves like molasses. Oh man, that is not a. That's not good. That's not a good thing for tomorrow's fight. Not a good thing. Okay, back to the media saying that Canelo versus Triple G three was trash. Look. One and two of Canelo versus Triple G was amazing. Grant, granted, you know, those were years ago. These guys were different fighters. It was amazing. It was a great fight, both times. So I get the expectation that number three isn't the same as one or two. It was a good fight. It all depends on what you want from the fight. If you're someone that's a Canelo fan, you're very happy with the fight. If you're a Triple G fan, you're not very happy with that fight and you're pretty concerned um so i don't see it yeah i agree with tall kid it was mid it was not the most exciting fight in the world and at a certain point i think the reason people might say oh it's trash or are really upset with it is because it started going one way and then it just kept on going the uh, that one way canelo never looked like he was going to get hurt he never really looked like he was in trouble Triple G just kind of, his punch output dropped. It just turned into this ho-hum. These guys know each other. Canelo's winning. Triple G is not putting up a huge fight in certain moments. You're just kind of like, okay, we know how this fight's going to go. No one wants to see a lopsided fight. No one wants to see a fight where it's clearly this guy's beating the other guy, especially when it's a trilogy fight. They want to see war. They want to see war. They want to see these guys go at each other. It didn't really go that way. So, I, I yeah, I have to agree with Tall Kid. It was mid. It was not trash. Joe Joyce is 6'6". Six, six. Okay, so I was off by an inch. Yeah. Even still, 6'6", six, six, 271. I'm curious if that affects... The, my bigger question is, does that affect Joe Joyce's stamina at all? Because he's known for his stamina. He's known to be just an absolute like machine with his output. He's really good about that. At 271, I wonder if he slows down a little bit. If if that punch output just kind of gradually goes down like I thought it was going to happen against Dubois. Didn't happen. Might happen against Joseph Parker. And if that happens against Parker, man, Parker's going to win. And he's going to win easily. I like, I really like the way Joseph Parker is now looking after that Chisora 2 fight, man. That looked like a much more balanced version of Parker. He looked so focused. He was so on point. His jab was great. He moved well. So, the Canelo versus Triple G 3 event was, yeah, as a whole was, was fun, yes. But the main event was, yeah, a little, a little you know, the main event was a little lackluster. But I have to agree. I think it was a fun event. Look, I, I just enjoy having good fights in general. The undercard, when the undercard's fun and the main event doesn't live up to it, that sucks. But still, regardless, if you have a good, it goes to show, if you have a good undercard, it still can kind of save the entire card if the main event's not great. You know? I saw that Triple G till, yeah, October 23rd against Lara out to fight at 160, which is great. From what I understand, Ben versus Eubank Jr. is is good. It should be fine, yeah. It it seems like it's all worked itself out, which is kind of surprising. Um, I thought it was dead, but it worked out, man. It really did work out. So, any predictions for tonight's fight? I think Shakur Stevenson's going to win. 
I think he's going to win by points. And I think he's going to win either one of two ways. Either he's going to have a very, very, very close fight where some people might call robbery or, or he's just going to dominate. It's one of the two. I don't think there's any in between. What's up, Shrek? This is the last prelim fight, by the way. And then we get into the, the main card, which is only really two fights. LeBron doing really nice right now. Yeah, I have to agree, Dana. Who should get the next title shot? Winner of Ruiz versus Wilder slash, slash Hellenius. Yep. Winner of Parker versus, oh, Joyce or Hergovic. I would say that's a good question. I feel like, po like I feel like Parker versus Joyce probably, probably should get it. Um, for a couple reasons. One, Ruiz was dethroned and Wilder were both dethroned pretty recently. And I feel like they have to pay their dues a little bit more. Whereas Parker's been dethroned for a while now. He's fought some decent competition. I feel like Joe Joyce, I look, if Joe Joyce beats Parker, right? You guys know how I feel about Joe Joyce. If he wins against Parker, you know what? Give the fucking juggernaut a shot at the title. He's never, look, he's never going to get another shot again. It's his one chance. He's too old. He's too slow. At some point, that chin's not going to hold up anymore. I feel like give the kid a shot. I <laughs> think the kid, give the guy a shot. It's like the same age as I am. Um, so give the guy a shot if he beats Parker I feel like Ruiz look Ruiz Wilder and Hellenius the only situation there I see where someone gets a title shot is if Hellenius knocks out Wilder or beats Wilder and then Hellenius beats Ruiz absolutely I think he should get a title shot no question no question because both Wilder and Ruiz, Ruiz, I, I don't feel like he's proved himself in any way. He's fought two 40-year-olds. Well, he fought one guy that was 40 and then one guy that was 102 years old. So that's not fair to give him a title shot after that. Wilder having basically a Fury, a Fury fight and then a Hellenius fight does not equal title shot in my, in my book. That's how I see it. Because Wilder basically just had a rematch that was obligated for the third fight. And then Hellenius isn't high up enough to say, okay, you get a title shot. Now, if Wilder beats Hellenius and then Ruiz, we can have a conversation about it. Ruiz beats the winner of Wilder versus Hellenius. I don't think he gets a title shot. That's, that's how I see it pans, pans out. Hellenius beats Wilder and Ruiz, he gets a title shot. Wilder beats Hellenius and Ruiz, he gets a title shot. If Ruiz just beats the winner of Wilder versus Hellenius, he doesn't. But if he beats both of them, then maybe. <laughs> like you, I think both guys are, all those guys are two fights away from big title contention. But they have to make it convincing. And they have to win in a devastating manner that people want to see them fight. If Andrew Ruiz goes out there and he beats Wilder and he looks fucking boring as hell, no one wants to watch that. No one wants to watch him get destroyed by Tyson Fury or Usyk. So, you know, Wilder, Wilder's always the wild card. If he goes out there and destroys people, people are going to want to see him fight Usyk. Not because they think that he's going to put on a master class or change or anything. But it's just that right hand, man. It's it's just God's hammer. And it's just insane when he just hits people like that. 
It's just like, done. Fight's over. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> it's just amazing. Hellenius is, I think, at his age too, man, he's probably never going to get a title shot again. Unless he unless he gets the one that is currently in front of him, possibly. Yeah, w, WBA number two. So... These are these are pretty tight stakes for Hellenius and Wilder and Ruiz. They need to win. They need to win. Absolutely. So um Trek over here. Wilder beats Ruiz and becomes the number one contender at the WBC. I know that's crazy. I, I it could happen. Backup opponent for Fury versus uh, AJ has some problems. It's actually a journeyman. Oh, no. Shrek, don't tell me that. Rumsdale, what's going on, man? Wilder needs a few tune-up fights. Yeah, KO some dudes and get the hype back. Abso absolutely. And look, if Wilder knocks out Hellenius, Hellenius, by the way, is tailor-made for Wilder. Like, perfectly made. If I was going to pick someone, it would be either Joe Joyce or it would be Hellenius or in that general realm of people that I feel like Deontay Wilder can time and just devastate with a huge punch, which is awesome, which is super fun to see, especially when he lands it, man. It's just, it's fireworks, fireworks. Ruiz, I just, after that last no last two performances for Moise, I'm not I'm not happy with him. I'm not convinced this kid's serious about it, man. I just don't feel like Ruiz can post all the workout videos he wants on on social media and shit. I don't care, man. Uh you got outpaced by a 103-year-old boxer. How? How did that happen? You're getting worked by a 150 year old boxer you're not a contender man you're you can't even handle the pace that wilder and fury have Uzik's gonna annihilate you and i bet wilder could easily touch you there's problems going on with um on with fury versus aj and so, now some guy who's named i already forgot is on the cards to fight Fury next, but oh no. He has five losses and it's in his third fight. Oh my god, winning streak against no names. Oh god. Shrek, I need to find out. I need that source. I gotta find out who this guy is because I bet I know who it is. Wilder versus Usyk uh, in March 2023. Dana, you know what, ma'am? That is a bad. Eh. He'll be okay with that cut. Wilder versus uh, Usyk is one of the most unique style versus style fights, man. Dick, how's it going, man? One of the most unique style fights right there. If we get Wilder versus Usyk. I think Usyk probably wins. I think, I think it's easy to say that. But there's always who knows. Who's, who knows with Wilder? You never know, man. Shrek, okay, now I'm gonna, I have to research this because if Fury fights, um, just a no-name journeyman. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, the memes, of course. Okay, I am not, I'm not finding it yet. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> That's right, Dana. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Cause He's got to be on point like the whole fight the whole fight you have to watch out for wilder which is what makes him deadly um you have to be perfect the whole time
Let's see if I can find out who this guy is. Because last I heard, AJ accepted terms and everything was good to go for like December 3rd or something like that. Which, which is awesome. I'm all for it if AJ wants to do it, man. Oh, no. <laughs> is he going to fight Man Man Manuel Char? Is that who it is, Shrek? No. No, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, we got to look at this. We got to look at this on Box Rack. <sighs> Fucking hell. Fury fighting. I. I <laughs> Here he is. He has four losses. He's been KO'd three times. He has a KO percentage of 51%. He's 37 years old. <laughs> and he's 6'3 and a half. Oh boy. He fought. <laughs> he fought. Oh my God, Christopher Lovejoy though. So there's that. Uh, let's see who else he's fought. Sephir Safiri, we know him. Sephir Safiri is a fucking bum. We've seen him fight Fury. Uh, Bradis, he fought Bradis and lost. He got KO'd. All right. All right. He fought Pavetkin and got knocked out. Yeah. He beat Kevin Johnson, though. He's been around the block. He 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 fought Vitaly Klitschko. Holy shit. He's been fighting since Vitaly Klitschko was still fighting. Uh, he got KO'd in the fourth round. <laughs> so, um, not super... He, Danny Williams. Uh, he, he's not super punch resistant. That's what I'm getting from this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I will say he's fought maybe, he's either fought in Germany, Russia. Other than that, he hasn't fought anywhere else, man. He's basically fought purely in Europe but primarily almost exclusively in Germany. What is with Tyson Fury picking on Germans? <laughs> this is the second German bum he's fought. Tom Schwartz. Tom Schwartz, I think, said it all, right? I mean, yeah, getting KO'd three times. I mean, granted, I doubt, I, I know Danny Williams, I, <laughs> Yes, I know. I think so. Yes, Dana. That's why when I called it, I saw it. I was like, oh, shit. Danny Williams. And. Um, let's see. Churchill would be proud. Oh my God, dude. Yes, the Danny Williams that beat Mike Tyson then got KO'd by Vitaly Klitschko in the eighth. Um. So yeah, I I gotta be honest, man. If if Tyson Fury comes f back and fights a fucking bum, um, I just, I'm just going to absolutely lose so much respect for him for doing that. After, after he just called, after he just called AJ versus Usyk 2 a trash fight. That's bad. That's really bad. That fight, that fight, Usyk versus AJ, I was on pins and needles the whole time. That was a fun fight, man. Broke, what's going on? I wonder what Shakura wait. <laughs> 
ways right now. I do too, man. We found someone who's more ancient and passed around than Luis Ortiz. Yes. Char, Char's probably at, let's say maybe 210 in boxing years. <laughs> oh. I want to say Tyson. It's because you picked 88. That's when Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson was probably the biggest problem you could have in the ring across from you when he was at the, around that age, 88, 89 and 90 that, that classic Mike Tyson, he pretty much gives anyone problems for days, like complete nightmare situation across from you. So I think, I think he picks, I pick, I think he picks Vlad apart. You know, I would say Tyson, after he went to jail, I think Vlad picks him apart. He's not the same guy. Think Shakur uh, can get a fight with Tank. It's possible. It's possible, but I would say it's not likely. Purely based on the fact that Shakur Stevenson is with top rank. It seems like PBC and and Floyd have a really nice close relationship, of course, and it works out for both of them to just keep tank fighting people in that promotion rather than doing a cross platform kind of situation. Bob's notoriously tough to deal with. Um, in general, Bob can be a real real dick to deal with so uh that's my general thoughts on that yeah i know if they don't announce spence versus bud soon i think we're all gonna lose our goddamn minds <laughs> i'm i'm at, i'm up to here right now with with spence versus bud i'm about about 20 percent away 20 percent away from just not caring about the fight anymore i swear to god if I hear anything else other than Bud versus Spence or Spence versus Bud has been made this year or the start of next year, if that doesn't happen, I'm just going to, at a certain point, by fall of next year, if it's not happened by then, I'm like over it almost. I'm at that point. But by spring, if I haven't heard anything, I'm going to be pretty pissed off. By fall of next year, if I don't hear that shit, I'm done. I'm over that fight. Plain and simple. Do you hear uh, Eddie's suing Jake Paul? Goofy ass. What are he suing him for, though? Oh, I can't. I, I mean, Bud Crawford is a pleasure to watch when it comes to boxing, man. He's just so good. He's just so gifted. And when you see uh, just a complete fighter like him, it's so fun. Because you can, you can pick up. You see all the nuances with a guy like, you know, Crawford. You see all the, like perfect footwork, you know, going up gears, changing things up, mixing up your game plan in the middle of a round. Like you see all those things and you're like, God damn dude. So here's the deal. Tank has two upcoming court dates. That's right. Uh, one on September 29th in Atlanta and another one in De late December for a hit and run accident. I remember that hit and run accident. <laughs> I almost did a video on that accident. I almost did like a whole like Tank Davis like. <laughs> had a huge problem and, you know, abandoned the scene and everything. And I was like, ah, I don't want to do that kind of stuff. So. Because Jake said Eddie bribes judges. Um, I would say, yeah. What else is fucking new? <laughs> like, uh, I mean, of course Eddie does. Has anyone watched? I, I mean, watch a matchroom card. Watch any matchroom card in, in the UK when it's in Eddie's back garden. Oh my God. Eddie's 
fucking back garden fights. Those are the most rigged fucking fights I've ever seen in my life. Those judges are so paid off. It's insane. Some of the worst judging I've ever seen just happens to be in Eddie's back garden that he does this like once a year kind of fight card all match room. Geez, I wonder why his fighters happen to do really well when they look like garbage. Of course he does. But then again, you know, if you're going to say it, you have to have some kind of proof. I guess Eddie can't really sue him for like what slander. I don't think so. That won't stick. That won't stick at all. Slander is really hard to do in terms of a lawsuit. So. The outgoing city uh, attorney general made a plea deal with Tank, but the judge didn't accept it. Oh, God damn. So, interesting. Actually, that's a good point. That's a great... Let me find out, actually, for a second, because that's a really good one, because I haven't heard anything... Let's see if I, if I can find anything about that in the last month maybe oh it's magically gone <laughs> yep that's gone i i don't see anything about that at all anymore i'm trying to find it see if there's anything more like relevant recently Yeah, not finding it. Yeah, just uh, it probably got it got to a point where either one of two things is happening broke. Either Crawford's team's building up a case and they're willing to try to get it all together and things haven't quite kicked off. Maybe they haven't had their court date or whatever. So they're waiting. They're playing the waiting game right now. And, you know, it might might take a long time for something, depending on what this kind of lawsuit is and how they go about it could take a long time or it got swept under the rug and they just were like we don't have a case here or bob was like i'm sorry here's a little bit of money shut up one of those things happened that's that's what i could say one of those things happened oh yeah no it and look i'm gonna be honest with you i did a 20 minute segment talking about this and I said, two things can be true at once, okay? Number one, Terrence Crawford cannot do great selling numbers on pay-per-view all the time. The other part of that, I also blame Terrence Crawford for not promoting himself at all. I looked at his YouTube channel and how he never posts to it. It's like every two years he does. He does very little on social media. He doesn't prom promote himself at all. So it's partially on him, but at the same time, I I do know for a fact there would be times where it would be like, oh shit, it's a Terrence Crawford's fighting this weekend. Oh shit, I forgot about that. That happened a lot on stream. We'd talk about, oh, what's going on this weekend for fight? Oh, Bud Crawford's fighting? I forgot about that. Or, oh, he's fighting in two weeks. Two things can be true at once. Bud Crawford, I think, didn't promote himself at all. He, in, in modern times, there's no excuses to say you can't get eyes on you as a professional athlete. If Ryan Garcia can figure it out, you can figure it out, bud. It's not that hard. And so the other side of it, though, doesn't mean that Bob did all the best he could for every single fight. Granted, at the end of the relationship, Bud had a couple really good fights. But if he can't get the PBC fight done with Spence, then I if I'm Terrence Crawford, I don't blame him, man. I can also see it from Terrence's 
point of view. I'm not able to get these fights that I need to get. Every time I talk to Bob about it, he's telling me it's a done deal and then it doesn't happen. I'm trying to I'm trying to see it from both sides, right? And people will point to Bob Arum's past in terms of who he's dealt with. Oh, of course, you know, he's just more about making money. And then people are like, well, he said he's said this stuff. In general, in general, I would just say it's just not a good matchup. I don't think Bud Crawford was happy in the end with what Bob had done. And I don't think Bud was also the best boxer for Bob Arum. Bob Arum wasn't happy with Bud. So it just it was just a toxic relationship at that point. So LeBron going after him. That's how I see it in, in the end. It was just a bad relationship at the end. Instead of, if they're like an old married couple at that point, they were like, instead of working together to get the situation better, they just said, fuck you and made public statements bashing each other and just said, screw it, it's over. We don't want to be in and we don't want to work together anymore. I personally, I don't think that's the best way to go, but you know, it's boxing, man. There's a reason Oscar De La Hoya got coked up uh, during the Canelo fight and Triple G fight and then talked incredible amounts of shit all over Twitter about that fight and how trash it was. And then it sold over a million on DAZN apparently for pay-per-views. So, you know, I don't remember the last time Oscar was on a million, million pay-per-view buy card ever or when he's ever put one together. So, you know... You can say whatever you want. Then Jake could also sue everyone calling his fights rigged. That's true. That's a good point, tall kid, which is ridiculous. Yeah, but you're you're right. Setting a precedent. Uh, but has never done great pay-per-view numbers. That's true. Only fight was Porter. Good point. If an unlikable child with no personality like Ryan can get a fan base so can Bud especially because Bud dude Bud should be laying into the whole Midwestern thing and being from like Nebraska and like dude lean into that it's not like the Midwest especially places like Nebraska let, let me tell you something about Nebraska okay there's fucking nothing there There's nothing there. That's why football is the biggest thing in the world to them, because it's something to do. So Bud Crawford, dude, lean into that. Like you should be a hero in that state, an athlete that everyone wants to watch in Nebraska. If they can support, you know, college teams the same way they support Bud, uh, shit, dude. But even still, Pump the whole Midwest. Why don't you fight in the Midwest? Go fight in Detroit. Go fight in Milwaukee. Go fight in Minneapolis. Like, get the Midwestern people on your side. But it's easy to do nothing, right? And then just blame Bob. Like, there's a way to promote yourself. Bob Arum overpaid Khan to fight Bud. That was easy work. (laughs) Dude, Oscar definitely needs to get off the internet, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just, I just think it's very, I mean, the whole conversation, man, in terms of managers and, and fighters is always interesting because you never know how people re like what's going on behind it all, you know? That's why Warren Buffett left. Ryan plays the the game well. He does. I will say that about Ryan. Ryan's pretty smart about how to do social media. I mean, Terrence Crawford, I think with just a little bit of PR, ma'am. Think of the highlights he has, the fight highlights he has. Why can't you put promos together and, and, and interesting stuff on your, you know, YouTube channel, TikTok, Instagram? Why can't you do that, man? He should be. I mean, he he's done well enough. He feels as though he's a Hall of Famer, right? 
He said that on Joe Rogan. I'm already a Hall of Famer. Okay. Well, dude, get paid, man. Here we go. Let's see. End of the prelims. Seventy-eight, seventy-four, seventy-nine, seventy-three. Unanimous decision. I think we all know. Yep. Little Ryan Garcia got the personality of a crusty old cubs sock. That went from white to dark gray. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, we got Keyshawn Davis tonight. I'm actually very excited to see what Keyshawn Davis looks like. Zone based their pay per view numbers off subs off subscriptions, not pay per view buys. Cause oh, watch a lot of cable packages. The fight was free. Oh, interesting, interesting. <laughs> Shrek, look, I, you know Ryan does a good job in terms of uh. He understands the attention span of people on the internet, man. He makes clips that are very well done, very short. He understands it, you know? And that's one of the frustrating parts about all these guys that are like, I need someone to promote me. You know, Tyson, you know who's the easiest person by far? Tyson Fury is the easiest person. Easiest person. If you're a promoter, you don't even have to say anything. Don't even say a word. Because he'll do it all for you. I have not seen Jake's latest heavy bag. Let's see. Okay, so I'm looking at Bud Crawford. I believe this is his channel. Let me see. No, it's a fan's channel. Let's see where Bud's at right now. No way. Okay. This can't be right. Oh God. It is, it is the official. This is disappointing. And I'll show you guys right now. Terrence Crawford on YouTube has 6.47 thousand subs. I'm sorry, 6.47 total subs. He's not even at 7,000 subs. How is that possible for him on YouTube? Well, because his last thing was one year ago. And then after that, it was three years ago. Like, look at the total number of videos here and views like come on bud that's disappointing you know all right let's see let's see this jake paul showing off his skills for anderson silva Let's get Bud to 10K. All right, let me see this real quick.
All right, here's Jake. Showing his skills off here. Okay, a little speed bag work. Not bad. <laughs> I love the guy fanning him in the back with a towel. Jake doesn't look half bad, man. <laughs> I just came in my pants. Uh, I mean... His body physically is definitely changed. Jake, look at look at the upper body of Jake Paul, man. That's definitely changed over the time. If he looks like that when he goes to fight next, Anderson Silva, he's going to be huge in the ring. Although S Silva is just a, a nasty fighter, man. I got to say, Jake Paul, as much as people don't like him, kid looks pretty serious. That was, I mean, physically, he looks great. Was in Puerto Rico. That's why they have no AC. Oh, God damn. Oh, I didn't even think about that tall kid. <laughs> why does he always duck his head with when he jabs? He looks better, yeah, than his last few fights, though. I, yeah, exactly, Shrek. I, I can see the progress. I can see the progress. Um, like I said, physically, he looks very different. And I think actually kind of in an impressive way. I mean, it's not like what he's trying to do is easy. I love, I love how they have... <laughs> Andre Ward, they have Ward here on the panel talking about Shakur Stevenson. Jeez, I wonder what he's going to say. Come on, man. I, I think that it's, I think it's a little unethical to have Andre Ward talking about Shakur Stevenson during his fight, almost in a way for ESPN. And then Joe Tessitore over there calling Shakur Stevenson a fucking prospect because he's an idiot. It has no Mark Kriegel over there just like wait waiting for his own little montage where he asks three questions to a boxer. God damn, man. Absolutely, Shrek. He does. Boxing and MMA fighters. It's all about self-promotion. And yeah, and then there's a Bellator card tonight. See, I mean I I, I just don't believe this excuse that, oh, well, I need my promoter to make waves for me. Dude, fuck that. It's not that hard. Social media is not that hard. TikTok's not that hard. Instagram's not that hard. Hell, the shorts you have for YouTube are not that hard. They're all, if you can make something that's 30 seconds long and you're boxing every single day and you're training all this time. You can't put together 30 seconds every single day and just post that on this, all three websites. It's the same video. You can put it on Facebook too. Like it shouldn't be hard. And then you have whole teams. Dude, hire a guy that's an aspiring YouTuber or something like that, that knows how to edit a little bit and let him shoot it shoot you with his phone for about three four minutes and he could probably come up with some sick 30 second tiktok video for you you know dude Shakur stevenson is a special fighter if he continues the way he he should and he does what he's supposed to do. Shakur Stevenson's going to be extremely special, man. You know? So, did you did you see the video of Bud's daughter running track? I did not. Maybe I'll turn that up real quick.
Seven-year-old daughter goes viral for running track. Let's see. It. Oh, I found it. This video is pretty tough to watch because it's so weak. All right, let me put it up for you guys. Okay, here we go. So Bud Crawford's daughter, this has 10.1 million views. Here she goes. You can see her taking the lead. She crushed it. She crushed it. All right. Jake, you have Jake in three. Ooh, okay, tall kid, that's a bold statement. Jake in three rounds with Anderson Silva. I, I, like, I like the prediction, man. 40 year old dash the Jake ball. Oh my God. Top rank would just feeling garbage right now. So it was December. I mean, the fact that it's always the red and blue lights and they're playing, we will rock you. For a Shakur Stevenson fan base here tonight tells you everything about how in touch fucking top rank is. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Playing queen is not something I would play during a Shakur Stevenson card. That's like white people hockey music. Okay. That that That's for people still stuck in like the 80s, man. That's not... <laughs> That's not the kind of music you play for a young 25 year old up and coming star to get his fans hyped for the fight. Oh dude, PBC, yeah, way better. Well, they also know who's who's coming to their fight. Okay, so this guy, let's say this guy's from Atlanta, right? I'm just making this up. Okay, my fighter's from Atlanta or he's from Texas. He's the Charlo brothers, right? If I throw in a couple of musicians or rappers or artists from that location that are going to be like big on the radio for that location, guess what happens to the crowd? They get excited. You play We Will Rock You from, you know, <laughs> the 80s. I, I'm sorry. Like, it's just not the thing to do. If this was hockey, maybe. PBC is excellent with their roster. I would say PBC understands. They understand their fighters, how to pair them together on cards better. And they understand who has similar fan bases. So if this kid, you know, is always being seen with one of their other superstars, you know, cause they're in the same camp or whatever, it's perfect. Cause then you get to see Earl Spence or one of their guys, Sean Porter back in the day, sitting on either the sidelines or in the back room with them. It's the same way they kind of do with Bud Crawford a lot of times. They used to do with top rank, you know? So. PBC understands how to kind of get their cards a little bit. A little bit better put together, in my opinion. The only problem they have 
It's <laughs> Brian Kenny, <laughs> BK gets his energy and his lack of knowledge is the only problem I see with PBC cards. Every time he gets on there, man, that guy seems like he's on straight up coke with Oscar. Like he just hit an Oscar bag and he's ready to talk about boxing, whether he knows anything or not. Um, he'll go out there and just say shit. <laughs> There's a ton of good fighters at 135 and 140. All right, tall kid, good seeing you, brother. Oh, you're staying? Okay, good. Shakur Stevenson just seems like he's just chilling right now in the back. And, uh... Robes, Robson is like fully worked up. When you look at him right now in the back, he's gloved up, fully sweating right now. Shakur Stevenson's laying, laying on the fucking couch right now. Doesn't even have his gloves on. They dick ride while they're so hard. Well, yeah, I mean, it's easy to. When you got a guy that has like a 90% KO percentage, it's easy to. So Shakur basically fighting for a check. Yeah, that's basically his, his, his belts are gone. His belts are gone. So if I'm Shakur Stevenson, like I said, one of two things is going to happen. If I'm Shakur Stevenson, and this is, this is me personally, I'm getting motivated as hell for this fight just to go out there and beat the shit out of the guy that could take my belts. No, you didn't see the, oh, the big, she loses her tennis shoe, stops, puts it back on, and still gets first. Oh, Dana. No wonder. Okay. I mean, it was it was like, okay, this is like, you know, a seven-year-old race, and she's crushing it. That's awesome. I don't understand why this went so viral. And now you tell me she lost her shoe and still won is amazing. Still has the ring magazine belt. Well, that's good. He has at least that one trinket. If I was that relaxed <laughs> in my first fight, I would have been knocked out right back on the couch like Stevenson. Dude, I, 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 yeah, he's very relaxed. And now it looks like literally top ranks doing nothing. They're not even doing commentary anymore. Let me see if they switched over. Did they switch over to ESPN or something like that? Let me double check. Okay, there we go. Main card now. Classic top rank. Dude, I know. What the hell? There's literally nothing going on. <laughs> Shakur is enjoying his Friday night. Oh no, Valdez gets his belt back. That's <laughs> fucking hell, man. Fucking hell. I still, I still, I still can't believe Shakur Stevenson didn't make weight, man. I don't know what's going on. Let me double check Shrek. I mean, you could also just watch a Discord. Let's see what's going on. All I hear is Jay-Z music. Current AJ versus uh, mid nineties Tyson. Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. So yeah, we're just waiting. We're just waiting for a main card right now. 
So that's fun. <laughs> ESPN's fights are the only fights I, I don't got a pirate. I know. It is nice. That yeah, is the one thing that is nice. From the Lewis fight, I agree with that tall kid. But yeah, I mean, top rank, classic top rank. Let me see if I could find something for you guys while we wait for this. Ooh, we could watch this. All right, I'm going to put on Rummy's Corner really quick. Hold on. I got to pee really quick, and I'll be right back. This is when I fall asleep. I know, they're not even, <laughs> even talking on my screen. Yeah, there's nothing. It's literally just dead air right now. Which is ridiculous, dude. How are you going to do that? All right. Coming up on October 15th and about that will be televised on Fox. All right, I'll be right back. Heavyweight contender Robert Helenius will square off against former WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder. I have to say, I really like this matchup at this particular point in time. You have Wilder coming off his only two losses. Back-to-back -back stoppage defeats he suffered against heavyweight world champion Tyson Fury. And then you have Hellenius having recently resurrected his career with back-to-back -back victories against a previously undefeated contender, Adam Kovnatsky. Once upon a time, Hellenius was a promising up-and-coming undefeated contender who had beaten three former heavyweight champions inside the distance against Lehman Brewster, Sam Keeter, and Sergei Lajovich. But following a controversial win against Derek Chisora, an injury along with some contract disputes left him very inactive over a three-year stretch. And he would suffer losses against Johan Duopa, Dillian White, and Gerald Washington. Going into his first bout against then-undefeated Kavnatsky, he was generally viewed as being washed up and past his best, but like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Hellenius resurrected his career with a fantastic showing. Hellenius showed a strong jab. He absorbed a lot of hard shots. He exhibited toughness and courage. And at the end of the night, he outgunned Kovnatsky in a firefight. Hellenius won by fourth round TKO. And all of a sudden, the Nordic Nightmare was back in the mix. The rematch happened a year and a half later on the undercard of Wilder's third fight with Fury, and Hellenius looked even better this time around. Hellenius was more confident, he had Kovnatsky hurt very early on, and Hellenius was landing hard clubbing shots repeatedly, and a desperate Kovnatsky ultimately started throwing below the belt. Initially, it was ruled a disqualification victory for Hellenius in round six, although officially the result was later changed to a TKO win for the Nordic Nightmare. For Deontay Wilder, he is looking to bounce back after... It's all good. We got Rummy's corner for now. Dana, I absolutely agree, man. Their epic trilogy is thus far the defining heavyweight rivalry in this era. Prior to losing against Fury, Wilder had made an impressive tank <laughs> it's of defenses of his WBC belt, including the draw in his first bout with Fury. To put that in perspective, Vladimir Klitschko, Larry Holmes, and the great Joe Lewis ever made more consecutive heavyweight title defenses. 
Wilder receives a lot of criticism for his level of up for Echo Robinson Dale. Is it that you're hearing the video on YouTube twice? Consecutive title defenses is no easy feat. And the only two fights Deontay has ever lost were against a man who ended the 10 year reign of Vladimir Klitschko. Okay. Before ending the five year reign of Wilder. Oh, yeah. If you're watching on here on my screen as well as that, then yeah, there's going to be an echo. The biggest question going into this one is how much did the Fury fights take out of Wilder? Both I know, Dana, I know. Mentally. If Wilder proved nothing else against Fury, he proved that his heart and courage are beyond... Dude, life. Trek, it's sad if he does. Wilder fought with every fiber of his being while giving his very best effort in defeat. I'm inclined to believe that Wilder will be as mentally determined... I think this is a good fight, actually, for Shakur Stevenson. ...some technical limitations in terms of the art of the sweet science. He has more than made up for it with incredible determination and a lethal nuclear right hand. Wilder God, I love that knockout. Opponent ...he has ever faced, including the four times he dropped Fury throughout their trilogy. But even if Wilder is the exact same guy he was before facing Fury, this is still not a given. <laughs> right, Shrek? Genius is a big, strong guy who isn't afraid to scrap. He has legit knockout power in both hands. He if he gets robbed, <laughs> it's, just, it's named very fitting. Stiff jab. And against Kavnatsky, he showed that he can still compete and win against a... I still think Hellenius is a little bit, a little bit more tailor-made for, for Wilder, but seeing him like this, this highlight, I forgot how well he moves. And in theory, this is something... But I don't think he's, I don't think he's slick enough. Better overall boxing fundamentals. I also think he gets pretty tired because of his age, and I think he becomes an easier tar target, man. Combine that with the fact Dude is legit built to get <laughs> to get robbed, and it could wind up ending in disaster for Wilder. This is a fight I definitely believe will not go the distance with the big power from both. Absolutely, man. I suspect someone is going to get. We're in between uh, co-main, or I should say the the prelims and main event right now. The main event hasn't happened yet, so we're just watching some Rummy's Corner while we wait. And the reason I believe this is twofold. First and foremost, while Hellenius might uh, fried cheese, I would recommend going to our Discord if you want to see the fight. Can't show it on screen, but we have links there. The variety of which Wilder has generally done very well against. Hellenius isn't as fast. Top rank stalled so hard for Ganey versus Camposas. Dude, that was terrible. Terrible when they did that. Is less predictable and collection of past yeah past fighters in their the library oh dude the library is actually pretty decent yeah no for sure i mean disown's not a bad deal it's just the fact that they make you pay pay-per-view now that really sucks even if he does wilder is a good deal more slippery than kovnatsky so for my official prediction i am taking dude if rummy's corner and i believe picks wilder it's it's like the it's like the Drake curse almost. I think we might get some fireworks while it lasts, but I'm expecting Wilder will land his bomb before Hellenius, and that even if Hellenius lands something big early himself, that he won't. I was so hyped for Haney versus Cambosis, and they just killed it, dude. I know that momentum really shut down. Second round knockout, but what the hell do I know? My track record is certainly less than stellar, and I'm no Quasimodo. But whatever happens, I am very fired up for this one. I believe it's an absolute... Very rare video of uh, Wilder KOing someone with his left. Ooh, that is, yeah. ...back big wins that resurrected his career, and it will reveal a lot about where Wilder is following back-to-back... -back yeah, I have to agree. Best of luck to both the Bronze Bomber and the Nordic Nightmare. And may the best man win on that night. So who do you think will win? Please share your... All right, let me see if there's... What's going on? ESPN, there's still nothing going on. Let me see if I can update...
Nothing is going on still. <sighs> Nothing is going on with Top Rank as we speak, man. This is so bad. Robert Hellini is, um has his hands dropped when he throws. He does. While there is going to knock him out, man. Knock his head off. Uh, that's very possible. Um, very possible. All right, let me see what else is on. So we gotta we gotta watch something because otherwise, man. Let's see what's going on. All right, we got a Teddy Atlas that's about nine minutes long. We'll watch that. There's a couple of things going on here that could be excuses because as a doctor, I took an oath to care not only about the physical being of a patient, but the spiritual being of a patient. The, the you know, that part of a patient. Not they just, should put up a chick fight. Body but the soul. And so I'm going to speak to that part where I understand a lot of people, they're confused with Canelo and how this could happen. I'm going to give you an excuse. I'm going to put a few puzzles. The first thing is... Hold on, Teddy. Before you say that, let's see what else we got. Maybe we don't do Teddy. I Maybe we want to watch... All right. Something a little bit more exciting. Hold on. Ooh. Okay. Here's a good channel. I like these guys. Um, this guy's a great YouTuber. Puts on good stuff. Go check him out. Um, let's see what he has to say about this fight, man. Parker in a battle of the top 10 heavyweights. This is and Broken Nose fight, Boxing. Check him out. For this fight. I don't think either fighter is particularly exciting to watch. Joyce, okay, he's had 13 out of 14 wins via knockout, so he, I'm sure some of you are typing right now, how can he not be exciting if he has that many knockouts? But he's fought quite low-level opposition. I mean, the win against the Bois was very... Already good. agree. Fair play, that was an exciting fight. Parker, load of experience load of experience difficult to knock out he's never been well, he's never <laughs> lost via stoppage victory but he has been dropped against dylan white and he's going to be very durable in this fight he's way more experienced than, than joyce and one super interesting stat joe joyce is seven years older than parker that's mental i don't think joyce is good that's crazy pro experience to win this fight i think it's going to be close it's going to be boring that's Parker a great win on great points. poster by them great poster all right let's see what else is available for us while we wait they're now talking and it looks like Shakur Stevenson woke up from his nap that's good that's great so maybe we'll go back to that Only top rank would milk their fight being a lazy sack of shit for 10 hours straight. Isn't that fucking true? Holy crap, man. <laughs> Put some gloves on, on the round, girls. <laughs> John, that might be my favorite fucking comment. Put some gloves on the round girls and let them fight for a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh my God, that's funny. All right, 
here we go we actually have a fight guys there's actually gonna ha have a fight here <laughs> here on top rank It's look, Wolf, it's it's a um purely boxer fan base that cares about this fight like you do, Wolf. It's like if you're into boxing, you know what this fight is. If you don't know jack shit about boxing, you don't care about this fight at all. Um, this is actually a very interesting fight, to your point, Wolf. There are some real details here that could be interesting. Yeah, dude, Keyshawn Davis is co-maining. Look, I like the kid. I, I want him to do well. Absolutely. Um, but I think they're still spoon feeding him right now. I think that's pretty fair to say they're spoon feeding him a little bit. You know. This kid's got a great costume right now, but he's going to get absolutely beat down. <laughs> nice fringe. Dude, Keyshawn Davis, special kid right now. They just spoon feed this kid. They spoon feed this kid. Just great, easy work. And oftentimes I don't care to watch that, but this kid's fun to watch. Oh, dude, Wolf, absolutely. I saw that. Romero won, but <laughs> by KO and, Be <laughs> and the Bellator card uh, was last night. Did you know that Romero's brother was in WBA 175 boxing champion? I did not know that. But Dana, the only thing I'll say about Romero winning, didn't he beat a guy that was one year older than him? Like Romero was like 35 and the guy he fought was like 36. Only thing I'll say, Jermaine uh, Ortiz, but he's he's getting <laughs> he's getting fed to Loma right now. I know. Here we go. Keyshawn, watch. I'll say this right now. Don't get up for a drink. This is gonna be a fast fight. This is gonna be a fast fight. I was going to say, I thought Keyshawn Davis was supposed to fight a few times this year. Um, he did withdraw twice this year. Interesting. Dude, 135 is absolutely stacked. It's going to change. We'll see if Ryan completely abandons 135. Then it changes quite a bit. Because then it's Loma, Shakur Stevenson, Tank Davis. All That's all That's all eye candy. And then obviously you have Devin Haney still there. And Cambosis, technically. And then if you also, if, you know, you throw in some other guys that might come up. Trinidad is a really good fighter to build your resume up, especially since um, this early in his yeah, kid's career, he's he's 25 and 5, which is, yeah, not a, not a bad. And Shakur, St uh, Shakur Stevenson. Uh... Keyshawn Davis is, you know, I think a kid that's fun, but let's see how he does when he starts stepping up, right? Uh, I think that Ryan at this point can't keep juicing the way he is and not and and make weight. So. <laughs> Maxie Hughes versus Kid Galahad is tomorrow, dude. Kid Galahad, I don't care about that. He's one of the guys I just, I just don't, I just. The fact he had a title. <laughs> I am going to be watching Joe Joyce versus uh, Joseph Parker on my phone, probably while I'm at this one year old's birthday party. The only reason I didn't do a stream for tomorrow is because um, I, I, I don't know if I would be able to finish the entire card in time, and I don't want to quit the stream before the main event. I saw that. Tall kid, dude, Benavides versus uh, Kovalev, two. 
Ward, I don't know what's going on with Ward, man. It is. It's going to be in the UK. We'll have, I mean, we'll have the links, obviously, in Discord, but. Turf up the one-year-old. Dude, when they're one Shrek, they're really cute. So we're going to go over there probably at like 4 35 o'clock, which should be right when the main event is. I think Ward would win right now. Benavidez, he, I'm sorry, he just hasn't impressed me too much. I get it. He's big. He hits hard. He's a weight bully. He also does a lot of coke. You know, I get it. I get it. I get the appeal. I think, um, to your point, Wolf, he could have lost that round. Judge's card, he probably won that round. I don't care. My, my boy going to watch boxing. The one-year-old can get it. Oh, don't, don't worry. I'm going to be watching it on my phone. This is the thing that always kills me, guys. It kills me. People all the time go into Discord and they're like, I can't watch it. I'm like, yeah, use the free channel. And then they go, it doesn't work. I'm on my phone. I've been using meth stream, everything else for NFL for years, for years and my, on my phone, no problem. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand people that are like, it doesn't work on my phone. Well, dude, what browser are you using? Cause Keyshawn Davis is coming in here. Easy win. Easy win. That's fair, Wolf. I agree with that. It wasn't a great round for, for Davis. Few good names on his resume. I, actually, I don't know. This round so far, Davis is definitely dominating. Arafat uh, was 30 and Romero is 45. <laughs> Pablo Hernandez is 175 pounds and cruiserweight champion along with ring magazine champion. God damn. Got a UFC trivia club Shrek. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I can, I can guess. I don't know. I'm not going to be the best at UFC trivia. I know old school UFC a little bit better too, even compared to modern. Davis now looks like he's very much in control this second round, very much in control. Now he's showboating a little bit, making it look easy. It's an eight rounder. Get the job done if I, if, dude, you don't get paid for overtime. This fan favorite fighter ended his career on his own terms. He's now going to another sport. Maybe, yeah, Nate Diaz, I think, is the obvious one. And Ganu is also possible. If you want a UFC trivia, I can give you one real quick. Um, this fighter started on the ultimate fighter and became champion after having an absolute bloodbath, which was one of the first pay-per-view style fights that was on Spike TV. And he fought Stefan Bonner. Who is the fighter? Davis uh, ended up catching COVID-19 twice 
and had to pull out the fights. Okay, Dana. That makes sense. That sucks. I'm too young. For I, I knew you would be. I knew you would be. That's right, Dana Forrest Griffin. That's 100%. I knew Dana would get that. Keyshawn Davis hype train. <laughs> That's right. Forrest Griffin. Forrest Griffin. That was an absolute bloodbath. And it was one of my favorite fights I've ever seen for the UFC. Uh, go back and watch that on YouTube. If you ever like are like, oh, man, I'm itching for a good fight. Go back and watch Forrest Griffin versus Stefan Bonner. That fight was me. And Dana White actually credits that fight for a creating an absolute spark for UFC. He's like, dude, when we had that on Spike TV, that fight was just talked about nonstop. You know? Top rank under top undercard B 9010. Stephen Bonner and Forrest Griffin, the fight, yeah, bought, yeah, it brought in millions of UFC fans. Um, I mean, UFC just exploded because of that fight. All right, Davis, I mean, Keyshawn Davis, nothing too crazy yet. He's winning. Which he should. So. And Gano's been great. Usman. Here's one. He went from a journeyman to a pound for pound talent and a top all time talent in his division. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Derek Lewis. Roly will beat Keyshawn. I would actually like to see that fight, King. I think that'd be fun. I think Keyshawn probably wins. I actually am pretty confident Keyshawn wins, but still, uh, I, I still want to see Roly fight, man. Uh, let me think a little bit more. Journeyman and then became best of his. Joe Joyce by KO. What round, King? What round do you think Joe Joyce gets that on Parker? Coming in 271 pounds. Coming in 20 pounds overweight. Oh, Charles Oliveira. Dude, tough man competition, Dana? Absolutely. It was totally different. Totally different. Seventh round. And what punch do you think takes down Parker? Do you think it's just a straight right hand from from Joe Joyce? What about, you know, Joe Joyce makes you feel like you can take out Parker, especially coming in heavy? I'm curious. I'm just curious. Charles used to suck hot ass. Rich Franklin. That's a name I haven't heard in a fucking real long time. All right. Come on. Done with the commercials. Let's get going. Let's watch fights. Then he beat Kevin Lee, Tony Ferguson, Chandler. Oh, yeah. Dustin Poirier and Gaethje. That's insane. That's an insane fight streak. That's a crazy fight streak. Roly fighting a lot better competition. Dude, I love Roly Romero. <laughs> and I got to say, man, I think Shakur Stevenson's going to be amped up for this fight. All right. 
UFC fighter went from all talk to struggling to walk for a, a while in a matter of seconds. He also got good hair. I'm going to pick... Uh, What's his face? I think Sean O'Malley. I think I think Sean O'Malley is who you're talking about. Cause he also struggled to walk. <laughs> Not sugar. Um Costa. Costa did against uh, Izzy. He's got a dad bud, but would ragdoll you, not Costa. Talk to struggling to, to walk for a while in a matter of seconds. That's a good one. And he's got a dad bod. Would that be Derek Lewis? Askren. <laughs> I gotta say, Davis better get this guy out of here soon. It's, yeah, it's a little bit of a snooze fest. Oh, dude, Keyshawn Davis, man, come on. Leon, what's going on? Jeez, what's going on, man? Keyshawn Davis, man. Go to the Discord if you need a fight link. Wilder versus Usyk. Usyk all day. But it's a fun fight. I have fun with that fight for sure. I think that's a that's a fight that you get up for. This person got a KO win versus a girl last year. But... <laughs> Has not fought since. They considered a goat. Fought a girl last year. <laughs> Discord's literally down below, if, Jay, if you're on uh, YouTube. The right hand will land. Dude, if it does, that'd be amazing. Pena? You're not talking about Pena. Oh my God. Top rank ESPN. Stop giving me ads. I want to hear what's going on in the corner. My God. If you're on your phone, just hit where it says more and you can literally see the links below. Canelo versus Triple G3 was a snooze. Uh, I would say it started out fast and fun and then it really died off and went into just kind of autopilot. It's not fun watching a one-sided fight. No one wants to watch that. All right, let's see if Davis can actually put together a nice combination this round. See if he can get this guy out of here. Cause I, I mean, I don't want to watch eight rounds of this.
Good guess, Wolf. Canelo vs. Charlo? Fireworks? Depends. I don't know, man. Shakur Stevenson, I think, should win. Nice knockdown by Davis. But not enough to knock him out, but good, good solid shot from Davis. Shakur Stevenson should win this, but it could either go one of two ways. Either Shakur Stevenson, I think it's either going to dominate or it's going to be a really close fight. Oh, Davis is battering him now. And the fight's over. Keyshawn Davis ended it. Nice. Hell yes. Nice job, kid. Getting getting the fight done. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Keyshawn Davis, at this level, I'm glad to see him getting guys out still. I would say main event's probably going to be in about start time, probably 20 minutes. Davis did beat a bum, but that's what happens when you're, you know, on your sixth main pro fight. You're not going to fight the biggest guys. That's pretty normal. And I've seen bigger bumps than that for your sixth fight. Just go watch a Tommy Fury fight. Earl will beat Sp uh, Crawford. Uh, I disagree with that. I would probably lean towards Crawford. Unless you feel as though Earl can put too much pressure on Crawford and uh, Crawford can't handle it. That's the only way I could see that, possibly. But um, I see I see Crawford winning that's, that fight right now. So... Oh, nice counter punch right there for the first knockdown. It's more based on stability than anything. Yeah, his opponent lunged, so that definitely helped. End of the fight was nice, though. Davis went after him, which I appreciate, man. He did a good job. He didn't muddle his work right there. The way he's keeping enough distance to keep power punching, but not muddling his work. That's some good experience. That's some good, that's some good knowledge right there. Some young guys completely muddle their work. Completely muddle their work. Solid, solid stoppage. All right, ma'am. Soul American UFC fighter was last seen ragdolling his former best friend for 25 minutes straight. He got jumped outside in the following weeks. Yeah, I agree, Robinson Dale. Absolutely. So first of all, he has friends. Interesting tall kid. Of course they're going to overhype him, man. Absolutely. He's making money. That's why. You know. Oh. Ragdolling his former best friend. I want to go with... Um, Street Jesus. Game bread. Done. Kobe.
Spence beats Bud. Spence has the higher output and better, yeah, connect percentage. And he has fought more proven fighters. Dana, I, I couldn't, I can't argue with any of those points. They're very solid, which is a great point of why Spence could win. Question is, does he keep that? Does the same thing happen when he fights someone like Crawford? I don't know. Crawford's either going to take advantage of it at a certain point and start getting away with it, or Spence is going to start backing down Crawford and beating him down. I don't know what's going to happen, man. I mean, either thing could happen. I'm glad that this, uh, I like Keyshawn Davis speaks well in terms of just being respectful and, and, um, very, very solid. I think him and Bomack are a good match too. Okay, Keyshawn Davis wants to be top 10. I mean, being 136 pounds. Basically, he's fighting at 140. He's 5'9". That's tough. Being 23 years old, basically fighting in the 140 pounds class. He's okay size wise. Dude, actually the Kell Brook fights a, is a good example. Um Spence really really showed he could shine in this in that Kell Brook fight cuz Kell Brook was countering him like a motherfucker and he just couldn't figure it out at first. The hand speed was just too much. And um <laughs> <laughs> Shakur Stevenson's walking out with an OnlyFans hat. Holy shit. <laughs> Stop everything. Shakur Stevenson's walking out with an OnlyFans hat. Oh, God bless America. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. Tall kid, is that what's his face? Witherspoon or whatever? God, that guy broke his shin so bad. If he's 136, he's basically a lightweight. I know, I can't tell because he bounces around. He goes to 136, goes to a 137, 138, 138. He's kind of like hovering. Shin breaking, I'm trying to think. What is this crypto garbage commercial? Ooh, at 140 and Brendan Lee, he'd get stopped, Dana. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that, man. 140's dangerous. 140's so dangerous. All right. Just show me the fight, ESPN. Let's go. Elvis Rodriguez would stop him. I'll say this. <sighs> Davis has some talent, but I haven't seen anything special yet. 
to a level that I'm like, okay, he's going to take... That's such a tough weight class. That's such a tough weight class. Like, 140 is one of those weird weight classes that's only going to get worse, actually. Because Ryan Garcia is going to move up. Devin Haney is going to move up. Tio's there. Like, there's, it's just going to get worse. Regis Prograce is already there. Like, Ramirez is going to be fighting there again. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot there. So, yeah, not, not a good idea. Not a good idea to be at 140 if you can help it. Saquon Barkley, dude, can be a really good running back. <laughs> See that girl behind <laughs> trying to take pictures? <laughs> I know, I know, it's bad. Keyshawn, he did okay. All right, I want to put on a little bit Teddy, quickly pee, and then I'll be right back. Get this set up though. John Ruiz and then back down. I believe that it did have a detrimental. All right, I'll be right control. back. So maybe that's playing a little bit, a little bit out uh, in it. Also, he looked like he was gassing after eight rounds, which was kind of amazing, uh, Canelo. Now, maybe it's because he really wanted to get rid of him early. He didn't, and then he started mentally and physically gassing a little bit um that i mean he started accepting clinches even initiating clinches you don't do that if you say you're going to knock a guy out canelo said it teddy atlas didn't say it. canelo said i'm going to knock him out i have no regard for this guy no respect anymore you know as far as belonging in the ring with me i'm going to knock him out listen when you have the advantage on the inside which you're supposed to have as the younger guy the stronger guy now in this particular time at, at, with a 40-year-old uh, Golovkin, you're not supposed to clinch. You're supposed to fight in there. You're supposed to punch in there and take advantage of that. And you're supposed to behave like the younger guy, keep the pressure on. Even his own corner validated what I'm saying right now. His own corner said, hey, it's time to be the younger guy. They actually said that. It's time to, be, to use your youth with this old man and be the younger guy. And he didn't. And again, if you want to knock a guy out, like he said, he wanted to knock out uh, Golovkin, and he would knock him out, you punch on the inside. You don't initiate clinches. But he did. There was a little break in, a little weakening, physically, mentally there on his part. Again, great fighters don't do that. That's all I'm saying. Good, solid fighters can do it sometimes, and he's a good, solid fight. But All right, guys. Tall kid, you gotta go. I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. Thanks for being here, man. All right.
WWE fan, Regis Progress is at 140 as well. Good point. Who became the world's youngest boxing heavyweight champion at, in 1986? Age 20, that would be Mike Tyson, good sir. Don't need to Google that one. That one I got right here. That's Mike Tyson. Shrek, you gotta leave, brother? Or are you gonna be just saying bye to tall kid? Which, of course, it seems like a real uh, real guy, uh, to be honest, down to earth. I would say I would say Shakur Stevenson seems more down to earth, um, especially after having his daughter. I feel like he's been a little bit more even keeled, especially. Ooh, ooh, let's see this. We'll watch this really quick from ESPN Ringside. Credit to Broke for this one. Broke came up with something that we definitely have to watch. Hold on, let me get there. Poking the bear. <laughs> um, careful what you wish for, Shakur Stevenson. Be careful what you wish for, ma'am. Duct tape on the glove. <laughs> and used to, to seeing them in colors. Yeah. What's the size of the boxing ring? I'm going to guess it's going to be 20 foot. Oftentimes it's 20, 20 foot. Sometimes it's 22. It can get as big as 24 or as small as 18, but generally speaking, it's 20. Dude, the only fan hat for Shakur Stevenson, man. My goodness. <laughs> hey, get paid. Get paid, man. <laughs> right? I like. I think Bud Crawford looked at Shakur Stevenson and was like, yeah, you're the best in the world. All right, bud. Okay, sure. Yeah. Move on up a little bit and wait and let's see what happens. Don't make me come back to lightweight. <laughs> I think, I bet you Bud Crawford said that off camera. Don't make me come back to lightweight. You won't like that. <laughs> So, Thompson Boxing has a fight card on their YouTube page. How many fighters with OnlyFans sponsors ships actually know what it is? I'm sure they all do. I'm sure they all do. <laughs> I can guarantee that. Dude, this is this so so many ads. Best in the world, but he's losing belts on the scale. He almost looks fat as fuck. Broke. That's awesome. How many fighters with only fans? Um, Shakur just got, got no shame. I have a question for you guys. All right. If we did a little bit of hangout in Discord, or we could do it live stream style like this, for football on Sunday, would you guys be into that or no? Glove, is he gonna, uh, uh, dude, I mean, I, I think he will 407. 
I think I think Shakur Stevenson's I like I said, he's gonna do one of two things. Either he's gonna like he's gonna do like he did against Jamel Herring, where he just came out and just dominated, or he's gonna have a fight where he struggles. One of the two is gonna happen for for Shakur Stevenson tonight. I guess I could do it for like Okay, family time, I got you guys. Just curious, just curious. Uh, Cause you know, football is always fun, but. Oftentimes on Sunday, oh, I have to tell you guys, I have some bad news. <laughs> some bad news. Uh, hunting season has started for, for me. So I'm gonna be starting to hunt. I'm gonna be a little tired during some cards. <laughs> Shakur Stevenson dumped uh, Jamel Herring and Oscar Valdez. He did. But the fight in between, I can never remember the guy's name. Um, the African fighter before he had Jamel Herring, um, he did not do as well. He looked very boring. In fact, he was highly criticized for that fight. So, you know, I think Shakur Stevenson should come in here and, and dominate, should do really well. We'll see. That's, that's ex exactly it, Broke. Oh, no, dude. I can never go back to that same amount of... Same amount. Have I shot a crossbow before? I've never shot crossbow. I have my my compound bows. And then over there, which you guys can't see, I have my recurve bows. But crossbows are sweet. I can tell you this much. It's the best of... It's basically like a gun that shoots arrows. That's what it is. Um, crossbows, there's a lot of controversy in whether or not they should be included in archery. Um, so, you know, Shrek, that's going to change this year. I swear. Um, I'm doing so much less than I used to. And, and I am posting to my outdoor channel more a little bit, um, here and there. And that's actually doing really well. We're coming up on almost 200 subs on the outdoor channel in one month. Um, so that's good. So, and I'm trying to use, I, I didn't want to spoil it, but I'm going to try to maybe get a 360 camera and start doing um, some filming of my hunts full 360. And if I can do that, that'll be fun. Dude, Wednesdays, so it used to be Wednesday, Friday, Saturday for streams. And I used to create at least one video a week on top of that. So it used to be between 12 to 15 hours of streaming. Plus, plus it used to be another probably five to eight hours of video content to make. Oh, hell yeah. I love, I love bow hunting. Love bow hunting. It's, it's amazing. It's fantastic. At the, press conference, at the, and the, the biggest thing with, with bow hunting is that, um, I'll just be very blunt about it. All the latest modern bows, which I have right behind me, as you can see, um, they're easy. That's, that's, that's like the easiest version of archery in the world. It's so easy in comparison to instinctual shooting with a recurve bow. It's a completely different world. Um, completely different world. So it's it's fun though. Here we go, Shakur Stevenson coming out right now. course unanimous decision yeah i think that's pretty accurate i agree with you i agree with you shrek actually i would say well there's easier versions of archery john i would say and i would say compound bows compared to regular recurves much easier and then really traditional super traditional with long bows even um much harder just because the pull is very different but 
I mean, yes, when you start getting out there, it's very different. You know all too well, John. 40 yards compared to like 80 yards. 80 yards is always hard, no matter, no matter what you're shooting. Only fans, only fans celebrating right here. Dude, uh, crossbows, especially if you can do them during uh, archery season, worth it. Worth its weight in gold. You're going to get some, you know, get some flack from archers, but if you can qualify for it, depending on what state you're in, I mean, come on. It's pull a trigger. You got to you gotta scope. It's as good as it can get. At this point, I don't care what you use, honestly. Here we go for Shakur Stevenson, boys. Right, I'm going to pee really quick. I'll be right back. And I'm going to get another sparkling water. In the memory of a childhood friend, Armani, who was shot and killed here in this town. Shakur himself, escaping danger, moved to Virginia. That came after more grief, the shooting death of a cousin. But he's so proud to return. He invited 100 school-aged children from the Quitman Street School that he attended to be here tonight for this fight, for this moment in his career. Let's go to the ring to Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside Prudential Center here in beautiful Newark, New Jersey. This is boxing, this is top rank. Presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. Brought to you this evening by Boost Mobile. Money is power by Bud Light, the official beer of celebrations. By AutoZone, get in the zone. And by Smile, only in theaters, September 30th. Our judges at ringside, Lynn Carter, John Signe Laurie, and Steve Weitzfeld. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell. <laughs> it's all good. I love Pigman. <laughs> White Claws. <sighs> okay, here we go. Is it going to be a tough fight or an easy fight for Shakur Stevenson, boys? I think this should be a pretty easy win. I think it will be. We'll find out though. It's either it's either going to be tough or it's going to be real easy. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the announcer's a little, a little bit WWE style for sure. Definitely for sure. A little WWE.
That's true, Dana. That's true. He didn't have to make weight. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see how the young buck does. If I'm him, I'm going in there making a statement. Go after him. Yep, I agree with Andre Ward. Can say so, dude. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough night for him if he's going if he's gonna try to play the boxing game. It's gonna be a tough night because Stevenson is top notch. Although we do have we do have a orthodox versus southpaw situation, so their feet are gonna tell a lot more information in terms of who's gonna maybe win or have the upper hand in terms of offense. You know, Shakur is already a champion at twenty at twenty three years old. That's right, which is pretty impressive. Oh, geez, top rank quality. No, he's he's not bad right now, Shrek. You're right. I mean, he's there to fight. Stevenson is very, very tough to, to hit, man. And Stevenson is, is just top-notch reflexes. Last time, last time, I mean, Shakur Stevenson makes... He made Jamel Herring look old. And I wonder if he's going to do that tonight. Oscar Valdez, he just absolutely dominated I agree Shrek he's missing but he's trying you know he's in there he's engaged I I agree Shrek I mean Stevenson is very economic Oh no, Jamel Herring was old, but he made him look very old. <laughs> yeah, well, they don't just hand out Olympic gold medals. That's <laughs> isn't that fucking true, Dana? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Cheers to you, brother. This is a good first round. I like this round actually. Oh yeah, Robson. Robson's five ten. He's he's definitely about three. He's supposed to be three inches or so taller than Shakur Stevenson. He's huge for this weight class. Good round so far. Yeah, close. I definitely think this is a close round. Shakur Stevenson's done the better work, cleaner work, but I like the activity from um, Carousel. Stevenson, I like switch it up. Go to the body. Come on. Good round. Good round. Close round. Um, I would say that Stevenson started very strong for a good chunk of that round. Probably half almost. Carousel did the better half at the end. Solid round. Solid round. Ten nine Shakur. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that Stevenson won that round. I would say the judges are probably gonna give him that round. So, regardless. Chat's not updating. Hold on. Let me fix that. You mean on here? So what happens if it's a draw? I don't even know what would happen then. Because.
Stevenson just had the cleaner work. I agree. Belts are vacated, but. Karis says Sal. I can't pronounce his name. I'm going to call him Karis Sal, um, which is an alcoholic drink. Um, um, Karis Sal honestly has the chance to win. If he wins this fight, he wins the belts. So. Conse Sal, I or Robson um, is very game, man. I like his output right now, too. He's not a Disney ride. Well, Carousel is a blue alcoholic mixer, so I can just call him that. Good combo for Robson. Yeah, I agree. He's doing a lot more this round. He's on the front foot a lot more, trying a lot more, connecting a lot better. Of course, Stevenson, though, trying to press it a little bit right now. Good, good comeback for Robson. He's definitely pushing Shakur Stevenson around a little bit. Definitely, definitely in willing to engage and be the bigger fighter a, li a little bit. Dude, he is slick. Leon, absolutely, man. He's looking good. He's looking good. And he's pushing, he's pushing Shakur Stevenson in the sense of like, step up. Come on, let's see what you got. He's not afraid to engage, which I like. Yep. Way more success. Absolutely, absolutely, Shrek. I could not agree more, man. He's, a, he's able to engage a lot better. Good counter. He's hitting him a lot more and then move. Do you see that? He just hit him to that simple one too. Changed angles really well. He he doesn't look like a like a 30 plus year old fighter. He doesn't look like a 33 year old fighter. He's moving like a 26 year old. He looks great. He's He looks great this fight, man. I'm not rooting against Shakur Stevenson at all, but I call it like I see it. And he made weight. He made weight and he looks great. That was a great, I mean, he dominated that second round. Now look, this is where Shakur Stevenson should shine. Shakur Stevenson should shine right now. Cause what he's gonna do is download that information. He's gonna go back to his corner. He's gonna calm down and they're gonna tell him exactly what he needs to do to counter that situation. That's that's what should happen within the next two rounds. If he's gonna be that next level. If he doesn't, it could snowball against him. It could snowball because the more rounds that you lose like that, it can get away from you really quick. You know? Shrek, I, I hear you on that, man. The karma side of it, absolutely. I, I think everyone agrees it's 1-1 one, one in terms of rounds. His chin's a little too high. 2-0, Dana has it 2-0 for the Brazilian. Let's see how this, I, I'll put it this way. We'll know that it's going to be a tough fight or it's getting really close when you hear Andre Ward getting very nervous. When Andre Ward starts sounding nervous, you know there's a problem. You could make an argument that it's 20. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Track. He's just a little bit too wild. Yep. But I like, I like the fact that he wants to engage. I'll tell you what, Shakur Stevenson right now, it's getting a little manhandled. When's Andre Ward quiet? <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, uh, other than the fact that his fighter's in there, the one he manages, 
Khan is uh, changing the angles and punching the chest, waiting for Shakur to move into the punch. Absolutely, Leon. Oh, good little counter. Oh, Stevenson might have hurt him a little bit. Kaseysau looks a little bit hurt, maybe. He got wobbly for a second. I agree, AK. They're definitely in his corner for sure. So at least I think one round, you could definitely make a, a case for Stevenson. Second round, probably not. Third round right now, it's interesting. Last minute's really going to change things. Shakur Stevenson has very crispy punches. He's really good at very precise punching. Robson's a lot more wild. But he's also throwing a lot more. So he's connecting more. I gotta say, this is a tough round to judge right now. Stevenson doing a little bit more at this end. Let's see what happens to this last 20 seconds. Last 20 seconds. Oh yeah, dude, they're super game, Shrek. They're, they're wicked game for each other right now. They just want to get in there and fight right now. They're barely keeping it together in terms of being being wise in terms of engagement. Okay, how do you guys have that one? I think, I think, um, I think there's a case to be made for both guys. I would say Shakur Stevenson had the better later half. I would say Robson had the better first half for sure. He at least sealed one minute of that entire, entire fight. That was just him dominating. Um, but I don't think it was enough. I think Stevenson also had a few shots in there that were a little bit crisp. Um, but it's close. This, yeah, this is a great fight. I agree. This is a very, very close fight for sure. Which is good. That's what we wanted. We didn't want a blowout fight. We wanted someone to actually challenge, right? 10-9 Stevenson. I think that's kind of the I think that's pretty fair. I would say you can interpret that second round however you want. In terms of landed, I mean, obviously they're going to pick total punches from Stevenson looks great. But I don't think that those facts tell the t entire story. This is a great round to start right now. Round four is already lighting up. I agree. This will tell us a lot, man. I think Shakur Stevenson right now is getting tagged for the first time we've seen him in a long time. I think we're starting to see Stevenson get pushed a little bit. I like this. Shakur Stevenson trying to just Trying to be the bigger man, which I like. He's not fighting small. He's fighting like I, I'm the powerhouse here. I like that. Toking Sports, thanks. thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate it, man. Of course, Stevenson coming in this round. The aggressor on the front foot. Ones and twos working pretty well to push him back. But I like the option that he has with going to the stomach. Uh, no knockdown. That was a push. Pretty nice. Stevenson really trying to get some kind of finish here. I know he's not the bigger man, but he's fighting like the bigger man. Here we go. Last minute. This is purely a Shakur Stevenson round right now. Stevenson's looking sharp. 
I like this. I, I I love what I'm seeing for Shakur Stevenson. A lot of I'm coming back at you kind of energy. I like that. He's not he's not just sitting back and being like, okay, maybe I lost a round or two. He's coming after him. Huge different difference in terms of personality and just style right now from him. Instead of working off the back foot, he's on the complete front foot. Which could be Shakur Stevenson just getting a little bit more warmed up as well, you know? Round's done. I think that's a pretty obvious Shakur Stevenson round. Oh, wait. They claimed it's a knockdown now. Wait, what? What's going on with ESPN? What the fuck was that? <laughs> they scored it a knockdown? I don't know. They said, so they went from it's not a knockdown to it's a knockdown really quick and they cut back and then <laughs> they cut away and they just go to commercial. <laughs> That wasn't a fucking knockdown. What the fuck? Goddamn ESPN. Stop acting like fucking DAZN. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, God. <laughs> Joe Tessator will tell us what's up when we get back. He better fucking explain what's going on. Because this is... Here we go. Let's see it. Let's see it. Uh, that's not. No, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. That's not a knockdown. No, it's not. Fuck. Fuck that. That is not a knockdown. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean come on man <laughs> Has this replay come to boxing to review the knockdowns? Dude, that's bad. Oh I'm surprised Andre Ward's given all all the rounds all the rounds to fucking Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson did land a punch. But it wasn't like a liver shot or like this is this is garbage. This is why they can't have Andre Ward on this fucking program when Shakur Stevenson's fighting. I said this. This is so unprofessional to have Andre Ward on this fucking card. Like get get Andre Ward off the mic when his fighters fighting right now. There's no way you give every round to Shakur Stevenson. Ooh, nice little scrap. Here we go. Last minute and 10 seconds. Who's winning right now? I would say technically Shakur Stevenson's probably winning on the card by a couple rounds. Good body shot. Oh yeah, no, it's it's AK, you're right. It's it's pretty brutally lopsided right now. Can say so, I would say it's landing some of the better shots right now. Yeah, Shakur is definitely landing some good shots right now. 
Last 10 seconds. Dude, Carousel just landed a huge shot. Good round. Good round. Better, better. This fight's already better than I think some people expected. Better fight than people expected. How do you guys have it? Score wise. 4 1. Going on to the sixth round right now. Static Bloom. 4 1 Shakur. He's starting to take over right now. I agree. I'd say Shakur Stevenson's definitely um, taking the reins right now. He's um, he's definitely looking like the better fighter. I do think it's a little... There's some bias obviously going on, but... It's not like Robson's really making a huge case for himself right now. Yeah, it's a definite BS knockdown, but regardless, he, I mean, he's winning, but yeah. 3-2 tied up because, yeah, of the so-called knockdown. I just, I mean, they're showing body punches right now. I would want to see total punches because I feel like it's pretty close. There was a knockdown, they claim, but it, was, it wasn't it was a knockdown. It was a push. I'll say this right now. Stevenson right now is definitely getting hit a few more times than I would like. For sure. Holyfield said that, um, that by the fourth round, you know what you can hit with your opponent with absolutely i would say yeah that's that downloading that people do um you see it a lot with Usyk. you see a lot with loma too i mean a lot of really good fighters i would say shakur stevenson's one of crawford crawford you start to see it come alive spence does too i mean big fighters really start to come alive after a couple rounds because they understand exactly what they're gonna do Goes, uh, yeah, <laughs> every time he punches. Of course, Stevens again getting a little bit frustrated with low blows. Greta round. Yeah, this is a good round for, uh, for Robson for sure. Of course, Stevenson seems a little bit frustrated this round. I mean, Shakur Stevenson's landing some shots, but he's not landed enough to win the round. No, no way. Hey, Shakur Stevenson's landing some good stuff. Andre Ward, shut the fuck up. Oh, good shot from Stevenson right here. He might steal the round. I think Stevenson might try to steal this round. And he, oh, he very might. Oh, oh, okay. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Shakur Stevenson really did well at the end of that round. Um, that was tough. I I think people are probably going to give that to Shakur Stevenson. I think he, I mean, he just landed some really good stuff. Um, huge, huge shots from Shakur Stevenson at the end of that round. I that was that was really good. 
Stevenson pulled that round out, I think. I mean, Shakur Stevenson did a... Uh, give the kid credit, ma'am. You know? You're back from Canada. Awesome, dude. Shakur has... Yeah, he's got some real power, especially if he hits you, man. He is very slick. If he hits you when you're off balance, watch the front foot, man. Oh, man. These punches landed... I don't agree with that. Where's everyone from? I I would say the bulk of people probably in chat um are going to be in the US and a mix of East Coast, West Coast and uh middle of America. And then I know, I, I believe we might have some people even south of the border a little bit in chat. Right, round seven. I mean, one minute in, of course, Stevens is looking pretty good. Yeah, Robson's definitely overreaching at this point. Definitely, definitely. That was definitely a slip. Come on. Fight first at 135. Well... I think Lomachenko would be the one that people would like to see. Is that the one I think he's going to get? Uh, I don't know. But it'd be nice. It'd be nice. From the Bay Area. Nice. Dude, West Coast is so nice when it comes to boxing in terms of timing. Everything's nice and early. Stevenson trying to walk him down right now. Stevenson's definitely trying to just headhunt everything. Haney got Loma next. No, Haney's got Cambosis next. And Loma's also booked for, uh, I believe, October. So they might be early next year if we're lucky, Jay. To lean towards, yeah, the round for Robinson. Shakur just lands a crazy combo out of nowhere. I agree with that, man. Every every time Shakur Stevenson seems like he might, might lose that round, he comes back and just lands phenomenal and just dominates. Um... Shakur Stevenson doing a good job. He, look, you don't have to win every single round just to be a dominant figure in the fight. This is a good example. Shakur Stevenson definitely lost maybe a couple rounds, maybe one or two, depending on what you saw, maybe three for some people, but he's answered very well. And what I like about Shakur Stevenson is that when he starts to smell blood in the water, he just gets this different level of, he gets a different level in terms of, of aggression and just nastiness, man. He gets fucking mean. And I like that about Shakur Stevenson. I hit you, I know I hurt you, I'm coming for you kind of mentality but in a very calculated, not trying to force the knockout kind of way. Haney fighting Campos, then moving to 140, yeah.
yet again this round stevenson doing a good job of if not landing clean stuff at least at least being the dominating force for this first minute of this eighth round takes a couple shots takes a couple shots Conceição out lands a good six punch combination basically another good another good jab Andre Ward's ridiculous dude for this Conceição out I don't think he hurt Stevenson but he definitely woke him up a little bit Haney versus and uh, Jacor will meet one day in the future, hopefully at 140. I agree with that, Jay. I think that's pretty fair. I'd love to see that as well. Robson's definitely hitting him. He's not giving up. I at least appreciate that. Oh, he absolutely beat Valdez. And especially if they fight again. I mean, to have this kind of level of success against Stevenson. Good round. 10 seconds left. Conceição, Sao, I think it's going to win this round right now. Yeah, I'd say he won that round. Robson versus Valdez 2 is next for the oh, vacant WBC ball. I can see that for sure. I mean, that would make a lot of sense. In terms of marketing, I'd say Robson won that round. I'd say he won that round. I might have it um, three five, maybe. I'd probably give three rounds so far to um, to our Carousel <laughs> fighter right now from Brazil. So close, close, very close. Good round though. But he needs a lot more than that. He needs to start stacking rounds like it's fucking cordwood before winter, man. He needs to get going because it's round nine right now. He does not have a lot of opportunity. He's got to do some serious damage. I mean, total punches landed. I, I I don't believe, I do not believe at all some of these figures they're showing right now. I don't think that Valdez will get the rematch against Shakur because I think Shakur's, I think it's a bad idea if he did. Um, but I think Stevenson's just done with 130 after this. He's doing a lot, Jay, absolutely, man. He's doing a lot better. I mean, we knew he was a good fighter, but we didn't know what to what level. And Stevenson's been on a red hot streak lately of just being really dominant. I don't see uh, Stevenson handling uh, them fighters at 135 like he did at one at 130. I agree with that, Dana. Absolutely agree with that, Dana. 135 has some real monsters in it. And, and the guys, I just, I think you can see just hit harder at 135 too. Yeah. I mean, if Stevenson does let off the gas, oh, um, does let off the gas quite a bit. That was some garbage from, from Shakur Stevenson. Um, this is Shakur's best performance so far. I would say Jamel Herring was probably the, the best performance because it was so, and as well as Shakur Stevenson, I'm against 
um, Valdez. Both of them were just domination. I'd say the Jamel Herring one was probably the most surprising for me just in terms of how well he looked and just he was so sharp from round one and he was just inflicting perfect shots. Score lost a point. Now it's even. And when it comes to that round where they gave him the knockdown. Robson gassed out. He's looking. He's definitely slowing down at the end of this fight right now. I think Shakur Stevenson trying to end this round well. He's done a pretty decent job of landing a couple good shots, usually at the end of the round, to show dominance and win the round. But this one's going to be a tough one. I think he's got a little bit of confidence right now. Yeah, this is a good fight, though. Both guys, both guys are in it, and they're exchanging, which is great. All right, and done. How do you guys see that round? I mean, it's getting closer. That was a good round. 6-3 with the point. So. Other than the point deduction, that was a Shakur round. Making it 9-9. Am I wrong? But I've seen Shakur hit Khan uh, with like 50 low blows. I would say they're right. It's tough to see. But it looks like it's just on the belt line, depending on where the ref said that they could hit to. He could have his trunks pretty high. I have to double check that. He could pull it off. He could pull it off. It, yeah, it all depends, Leon. It depends on where the judge wants to give them for leeway. I, I think that's a good question, though. Because even Shakur's uh, belt line looks a little high as well. It's pretty close to the belly button, so... 10-8 Brazilian from Dana. 7-2 Shakur with a knockdown and a point deduction. I think that it's interesting if it was a 9-9 round in round 9. I would give three three rounds at I would give three rounds to the Brazilian. No, they won't they won't give him a chance at all. Nice moral victory. Same thing you could say about when he beat Valdez. I'll say this much. He's giving he's giving Shakur Stevenson a much needed step up in competition, that's for sure. Gore Stevenson trying to battle that center right now with a minute and a half left. Robson doing a good job this round in terms of smothering some of that work from Shakur Stevenson. This is getting a little sloppy right now. 50 seconds left right now. Good right hand. I mean, 
Robson might win this round. And he throws him again, dude. Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not qualified for super chat. I don't have enough subscribers or anything like that. Plus, I don't even put subscriptions on when it comes to Twitch. It's all free. It's all free. Let's see. Bro. Ward is so annoying. Well, I mean, Andre Ward's going to be very opinionated, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I could have easily put on ads when it came to, to Twitch. But you guys would have to watch, like, two-minute ads in the middle of fights. And that, that'd be terrible. Why would you want to watch that? I don't, I don't need the couple bucks I'd make off of that. Screw that. So far, that was a closer round. I would say that could have been that that could have been a score round, or that could have been. I don't know. I don't know, man. That could have been a Robson round. I think. I think that could have been a Robson round and now we're getting very close. Now we're getting very close. Jay, no problem, brother. Yeah, I just did towards Shakur. I hear you. I, I don't know how these judges are going to score stuff though. I mean, we can we can suspect anything we want, but unless unless Robson does something big in the next two rounds, I think Shakur Stevenson's probably going to get the nod regardless. <laughs> Static awesome, dude. If he throws him one more time, he's going to DQ Stevenson. I mean, <sighs> It's getting to a point, right? Good round so far. Ninety-nine, ninety-eight foul. Robson, I think, is doing pretty good. Big drop. I mean, pretty decent, I would say. I would say, I feel like Stevenson um, done pretty decent for that. Get a win decisively against the champ. Yeah, especially in his hometown. Absolutely, AK. Absolutely. No question. They're going to score pr probably pretty similar to Andre Ward's card. I think there'll be one judge that makes it a little bit more fair, and the other two will just be like pure Shakur Stevenson. Round 11, not a great round for either guy, really. No one's really standing out right now. We got 49 seconds left. 45 seconds left. Jaden, what's going on, dude? Shakur Stevenson versus Devin Haney. Let's make it happen. Absolutely. Would love that. Not a lot of boxing fans here, but uh, my girl gets annoyed with me talking too much boxing. That's why I like it here. Dude, absolutely. Jay, you want to talk with boxer, boxing fans and UFC fans? Definitely join the Discord down below and on YouTube. You'll see it. Um, that's all we do every Saturday. We just talk boxing and UFC. So, dude, welcome, welcome to the community for sure. Stevenson's probably going to edge that round, although he, I didn't see anything crazy from him. Honestly, not a great round for either guy. 
I bet we get two good cards and one horrible one-sided round. Yeah, I, I bet. Or one horribly one-sided card. Yeah. 8-3, says John. I Yeah, I think Shakur is going to get the definite nod right now. This this last round, unless there's some something crazy happens, I think Shakur Stevens is going to watch away, man. I would say, Jay, I know boxing better than I do MMA. MMA is just... When they're standing, I understand it. When they get to the ground, that's where I'm just not super knowledgeable. Just to be honest. So boxing's boxing's probably my number one. But MMA, I love I love MMA, man. Papa, thanks so much for the follow, by the way. I appreciate that. Now, nah, Haney, uh, whitewashes Stevenson doesn't uh, have enough power to get in his... I mean, I think that Shakur Stevenson would have a lot of problems with Devin Haney. Devin Haney's double jab and jab in general is a real problem. Shakur Stevenson would probably win on hand speed, probably counter pretty well here and there, being a southpaw too. Might mix it up a little bit, make it difficult for Haney in certain moments. But I think Devin Haney could win a boring decision from Shakur Stevenson. You know, was there to make sure the judges hear <laughs> Hear him out. The fight should be scored. Absolutely, AK. I mean, that's why, look, I, I understand supporting your fighter. I'm not against that. I'm just saying you should not be doing commentary for uh, for the fight of, for your fighter right now. And then doing the scorecard, the unofficial scorecard, like, come on. It's like, imagine if they gave that Imagine if they gave that to Eddie Hearn during an AJ fight. Like, that's basically what they're doing. ESPN's doing with Andre Ward on this. You know? <sighs> this last round, pretty lopsided. Robson's not doing much. Not doing enough. Definitely not enough. 116, 112. Good card, yeah. Shakur Stevenson does have a good gas tank. Tank beat Stevenson in the gym. They they pulled him and he went home. Oh, God. Sparring. I love sparring stories. I'll say this much. Uh, Shakur Stevenson is going to win. Um, not the most dominating fight from him but certainly a win <laughs> Jay no one gets no one gets hurt 12 12 right 12, 12 rounds of jabbing and hugs is not true I swear I thought this would uh that was a knockdown for a second I got hyped I know I hope too not a bad fight. Not a bad fight. That definitely looked like it could have been a knockdown. You know they're not going to show the slow-mo on that, though. Solid fight overall. Let's see how bad the judges go with the cards. If I have to bring out the ski mask, I will. We'll see how it goes. Imagine they give every round to Shakur Stevenson. That's that would be bad. If they if they scored it the same way as Andre Ward, man. Yeah, it was a good fight, not a great fight. 
it had moments, but at a certain point, ma'am. Sent him to the dentist. They gave risotto to his ass. Oh my god. If they gave risotto him, it's going to be bad. Well, so now, uh, at most one, three rounds. I had him at least three rounds, maybe four, but definitely not more than that. So we'll see. On October 22nd for UFC fight. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oliveira. Yeah, we'll be live for that, Jaden. Absolutely. We're going to be live a lot in October. So next weekend, there is no fight next weekend, really. But on the 8th, we have Eubank Jr. And we have Ben. And then we have Fedora that night. October 15th, we have a ton of goodness with Shields and Marshall and Wilder and Hellenius. Plus, we also have Haney versus Cambosis 2. And then after that, we have Katie Taylor on the 29th, Fury versus Hunter on the 29th, which, eh. But we get Jojo Diaz versus Zapata. And we get Lomachenko versus Ortiz. So we'll be live for that one for sure. November 1st, eh, not much going on there. So is Spence Crawford for uh for real deal? <sighs> Nothing's official until they announce it. Oh, AK, yeah, he was pissed. He was super pissed. I was really surprised uh, by the fight. This fight, I expected to be boring, one-sided fight. I did too. It was a bad. Let's hear how it goes. Oh, that's right, Jake Paul versus Silva on the 29th. Okay, they're just giving us some music, and we're just waiting right now. Score Stevenson just looks purely pissed off. Like, what's going on? Here we go. Okay. 117, 109. One eighteen, one oh eight. One seventeen, one oh nine. Wow. Okay. Well, let's see what Shakur Stevenson has to say now. Ludabella. Is that Ludabella in the ring? Oh, no problem, John. That was a very lopsided judges scorecard, which is what we pretty much expected. <laughs> let's see what Shakur has to say now. Okay. Okay.
He killed himself to make weight, but he didn't. Bivol vs. Zerda, when is that uh, that fight? That's a good question. Let me find that for you. Bivol vs. Uh, Ramirez will be on November 5th. I'd probably pick Bivol if he can fight the same way he did against Canelo. Get fight uh, fighters out of the there at 130, man. He won't be able to, to take out guys at 135, dude. Absolutely, man. I agree, AK. I wonder who's gonna ask call out. I'm gonna guess Loma. Oh, dude, Bivol versus Ramirez is gonna be great. Mexican style just can't beat Bivol. Well, it depends. If Bivol shows up the way he did against Canelo, he should be great. If he if he dips in performance, which he's done before, he's done. So, yeah, November 5th, that's going to be a good fight. Okay, just ask. Just ask who he's going to fight next. <laughs> There's a fight card Tuesday night from Japan. He said anybody. He's saying now he wants Devin. Oh, he said he wants Loma. I don't know, ma'am. I don't know. Isn't Zerto like 40, 40 and 0? He is actually 44 and 0, Jay. <laughs> to your point. Um, he has an 86% KO percentage. Um, you know, he's a solid fighter. I mean, looking at his history, let's take a quick peek. Jesse Hart's probably his biggest name. It seems like author Aberman. Oh God. Okay. So, why is Teddy hating so much? Is Teddy on Twitter right now hating? Let me check Twitter really quick. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, sure, he has talent, but <laughs> can they also tell you he's not in there with Ray Leonard? <laughs> Oh, or are we dumb? Dude, Teddy Alice is not having it at all. I don't think these commentators tell me he's talented plus control range, but he's not exciting. Oh, Teddy Atlas throwing shade on Shakur Stevenson. Damn, Teddy. Zerto, I believe, is bigger. Let me double check that for you. Let's get exact numbers. He's six two, so he's bigger. Bivol's closer to six foot. Yeah, seventy two inch reach compared to a seventy five inch reach. That wasn't even a bad fight. That was a pretty even fight for a couple rounds. Couple rounds. Shakur Stevenson won, but still, not bad overall. Not bad overall. 
considering what was out there, you know. I respect Teddy Atlas, but I feel he's not ab about it anymore. I know he gets a little heated, I think. Okay, so next weekend, I don't think we have anything. There might be a UFC uh, card, like a fight night card that we can do next weekend. But regardless, I might take next Saturday off if there's nothing good that comes up that I can think of. After that, we have a slew of fights that are going to be happening every single Saturday. I mean, after that, the eighth, we got Eubank versus Ben. You know, we got a, we got Fandora fighting on the eighth. The 15th, we got Shields and we got Marshall plus Wilder versus Hellenius versus Haney versus Gambosis too. Maybe gaming. I don't know. We'll see what you guys want to do on Saturday next week. Um, but regardless, hopefully you guys had a good time tonight. I think, you know, pretty decent overall. Tomorrow, I will not be streaming. I'll probably be busy. I will try to put the stream on in Discord for you guys if I can. At least some of it. Maybe not all of it. But can't promise anything. I'll try to do my best for you guys. So with that said, guys, have a great week. We'll see you guys hopefully next weekend. And if not next weekend, the weekend after. We'll figure something out for sure. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it, man. See you guys.